I'm starting with uh, April Rose Committee Substitute, House Bill 90. It's to eliminate North Carolina Final Exams. Uh, Representative Elmore will be presented. Is anyone presenting with you? Uh, and uh, Pat Hurley. And we're going to have this just for discussion. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what this bill does, I, I think that we all um, hear from our... Just a moment, Representative Elmore. I said, can I have a motion to have the P PCS before us? We have a motion. Those in favor, say aye. It's uh, properly before us. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think as we're all out in our districts, we uh, hear comments about the amount of testing that's going on in our public schools. Um, as a matter of fact, in a, one of the papers from my district, uh, there was a editorial read the need for so much testing is question. This was written by a parent. But the big question is, um, what test are we actually utilizing to uh, shape policy and use as comparing to other states uh, when we're determining uh, the decisions that we make? So what you have to do is analyze what the actual tests are doing. Uh, what this proposal will do is eliminate the NC final exam and also the ASW process. Now, uh, what are those testing? Uh, what, who are, is this elimination effective? Most of the um, NC final exams are taking place at the high school level. These would be uh, courses that are not aligned to the federal requirements, uh, the EOC courses. Uh, also, it doesn't affect the ACT at all. So that's primarily dealing with uh, the classes, like I'll give an example, the U.S. History course, um, the exam that is given at the end of that. Uh, currently, they are state-created exams. What this would um, create is that it would go back to the system where it would be uh, teacher-created exams at the end of those courses. Now, the ASW process is a process that was created for uh, you could call them program enhancement teachers. Uh, these would be your music teachers, um, band teachers, art teachers. Um, what I'm finding as I talk with folks about that process is that it's hard to um, have a consistent assessment of those areas. Um, the way that it's looked at in Brunswick County may be different than the way that it's looked at in Guilford, different than the way that it uh, is in Wills. So you are not really having a consistent measuring point there. So it would just eliminate that process for those teachers. And that's, that's it. Do we have any questions? Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we have one. Representative Graham. Can't get off that easy. <laughs> I didn't figure so much. So you're, you're recommending that um, a student who finishes a course in our high school, we're talking about a core course, history, English, science, math, that those students will not have a state administered final exam. It will be are you saying that would be a teacher developed final exam? Or, or, am, I, or am I getting too, too broad here? Where are we seeing that more? Um, some of those subject matters that you um, talked about there are required by um, federal policy. So it's not going to affect the EOC in uh, biology, I believe, um, English language arts, 10th uh, grade. There's a couple of ones. So, I think what you're talking about core, it's not affecting um, what we're having to turn into the feds as measurement. It's affecting the uh, other courses. Did that answer your question? Can you give me what courses that they're affecting specifically? Um, I'd like to ask staff to uh, answer what the uh, EOC courses are. Okay. So under the testing statute um, in North Carolina, 
the statewide standardized tests that are required to be given are grade, uh, in grades three through eight, math and English. Um, students also take a science test in fifth and eighth grade. And then uh, in high school, students take what's uh, the math one has a standardized test. It's, I think, traditionally what people thought it was algebra one. Um, the biology exam and the English 10 are the three high school tests that are tested. And then North Carolina also uses the ACT for all 11th graders. So all of those tests would remain in place, but any of what um, have been referred to as North Carolina final exam, so most of the other high school courses would no longer have a statewide uh, assessment. Except, except for Representative Green. Yes, ma'am. Re Representative Horn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Elmer, could you explain how this, or will this elimination impact uh, teacher evaluations, uh, EVOT scores, what things are tied to the final exam now that would have to be recalibrated? Um, at one time you had um, what's called standard six in the evaluation, which deals specifically with the test data. That at one time was a standalone provision in the evaluation. Uh, that by board policy has been decoupled, meaning uh, it's no longer a standalone provision. So uh, what this is being looked at, they give advice that you um, spread it across the rest of the evaluation, is how they put it. So it, currently it's not used as a standalone. We're looking specifically at the score. They're tied into other performance measures in the evaluation instrument, which there's five components of it and multiple pages of things that they're looking at, ranging from instructional practices, involvement in the schools, um, all of that. So, and, and you would be able to, am I correct if we, am I, am I correct if we characterize this that there are, are no uh, evaluations either for student or teacher tied solely to the NC final exam? Uh, will you restate your question? Okay. Am I correct in characterizing uh, evaluations, whether they be evaluations for a student or for a teacher, that are tied solely to the NC final exam? Um, I, I think the way that I would answer that is no, because with the teacher evaluation, because it's not standalone anymore, it's spread across the entire evaluation um, from the teacher perspective. Uh, also, with the student perspective, uh, these were being used as part of their grade, but that can be accomplished through a teacher-created exam, too. Uh, the data was never necessarily used on um, the student component because with these courses, you would have the, um, a batch of kids that take U.S. History 1. Well, the teacher would have a totally different batch of kids for the next semester for U.S. History 1. So there's no way to correlate because you've got different batches moving through if you're referring to student growth. Well, I just want to make sure that we're, that if we pass this bill, eliminating a particular evaluation, examination, that we're leaving some type of evaluation hanging out there with that, that is tied solely to this exam so that they don't, so, so that we don't have to either create something new, or maybe we do, but is there anything dependent only on the outcome of this examination? Representative Hamill. At this point, because they decoupled standard six, no. Okay. Representative Blackwell, remember we're discussing this. We have four more bills and have to be out of here at 10 minutes to 11 for. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to clarify for me, if I may, uh, Part of the bill, as I understand it, would eliminate the use of these exams as a part of the evaluation for the teachers, correct? Representative Bamboo? Yes. Uh, and follow up. And the second part is, do I understand correctly that in addition to no longer using an exam of this sort for evaluating teacher, uh, we also would be eliminating the statewide exams wherever we could uh, 
free of federal requirements, and we would not be eliminating the exam for the student, though that would become a student, I mean teacher prepared exam. That is correct. Okay, final follow-up. Yes. Uh, so what we would be doing is we would prevent ourselves, for example, in U.S. history from being able to compare performance across the state on an exam that everybody got. We would have to be, we'd have all sorts of apples and oranges and things to, uh, that we would simply, uh, I guess, ignore going forward. Well, I'll, uh, Representative Elmore. Sure, uh, I'll give you a, a little proverb. Uh, to make an elephant grow, you must feed him, not measure him. My question is, are we actually utilizing that data at this point from a statewide policy perspective? Representative Richardson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, under bill analysis, there is a second elimination here that uh, you are going to eliminate the requirements related to student growth expectation and qualifying teachers to serve as mentors and clinical educators. Can you explain what that elimination is? Representative Allen. Um, Representative Richardson, I think that will be better answered in a bill that's coming up because we're doing some clarification on the mental requirements. Uh, what we did, we tied the mental requirements to the test scores of the teachers and uh, we said that they had to be above proficient to be able to even qualify for a mentor. Uh, what we found, because of that provision, it's very difficult to fill the mentor slots and the State Board of Education has actually uh, asked us to tweak that language. So what you're seeing right there on the next upcoming bill, you can see all that language switch. And I... Representative Brockman. Oh, I'm sorry. So why is it in this bill if it's not correct? Shouldn't it be eliminated from this bill and just wait for the next one to come up? Because there will be conflicting information in two different bills. I have to draft the bill based on what the current law is, so that's the reason why the language is that way. What's coming up is proposed. Representative Brockman, we're just discussing this bill, if you remember. Uh, I just have a simple question. Uh, how do uh, the interested parties feel about this? Teachers, uh, school board, folks like that? Representative uh, I talked with DPI yesterday. We clarified some um, language hitches that they've had. They said it's a policy decision. Uh, talked with uh, SAS. Uh, they said it's a policy decision. Uh, NCAE said they're indifferent. It's the, the, they don't want to form an opinion on it. So I think at this point it is truly a policy decision. 